Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CEO Thomas Cook, Peter Fankhauser, in discussion with Skift Europe editor Patrick White. Hello, Peter. Thank you for, Hi, thanks for coming. And this is your second time, I think, in a row you've been at Skift. Yes. You were in Berlin last year. Last time it's pretty um, and this is the last session of the day, so if you've got any questions, any burning questions, um, please put them on the Slido, uh, uh, and I'll come to them at the end. Uh, okay, so Peter, you've been at Thomas Cook for 20 years, I think. You started in 2000? Almost. Almost 20 years. Yeah, 2001. And you've, you've been CEO for four and a half years, yes. but I'm guessing that 2018 was perhaps the most challenging year in your time as uh, Thomas Cook, perhaps a CEO, definitely. And you had, um, you had Brexit, you had the hot European weather, you had um, profit warnings, you had a pre-tax loss of 53 million pounds. This is a hard question, so you know, I'm just gonna start it off there. I was almost <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> so, so where did it all go wrong? Look, we, we admit that 2018 was a difficult year for us. It was not only for us a difficult year, it was for others as well a difficult year, but that is not an excuse. Uh, and, and we took our learnings out of it, and uh, we are much more cautious on the capacity side this year. We are de-risking the business, but uh, what is important is as well that we stay focused on what we can control and what we can do best, and that is really focused on the customer. Uh, what I said in Berlin already, to develop further our, uh, our hotels and our hotel uh, company, what, where we have amazing brands with uh, Casa Cook, and recently now added Cook's Club, where we really we are addressing a new concept to a new, uh, a new audience of, of travelers. And, and we are proud of what we have achieved, but uh, we are not neglecting that we are in a very competitive and in a very... Uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a very difficult environment. Mm. And we're in a, you're in a closed period at the moment, so we can't talk about current trading, but yes. earlier this year you did announce a strategic review into your airline. Do you think a tour operator needs an airline to be successful, and, and have you come to a resolution on what you're going to do with your airline, uh, airlines plural, actually? We consistently said that we are proud of our airline, and our airline is really a, a, a jewel we have a very well-run airline with Christoph Debus at the top. We integrated uh, all our airlines into one airline system. And, uh, but we said as well, to really be successful as a holiday company, we don't, know, we don't need to own the airline and we don't need to have them on our balance sheet. That is, a, that is something which, in, in this situation where you say, okay, where do I put my focus on? Then our focus is on st our strategy is to develop best experience for our customers, and this we can do in the destinations with our own hotels. And, uh, and, and we have also to, to admit that we have to deliver our balance sheet. We have to pay back the debts, and that is a heritage I took over uh, from, from long ago. And then the airline is on the review, of course, if you do that. Because when you have mentioned the pre-tax loss, what we did last year, we did on the operating level, we did a profit. But if you have to pay 125 uh, million uh, of interest every year, then you sell first 3 million of uh, holiday packages or 3 million of, of customers you sell holidays before you can even think about investing uh, in, in new projects. Yeah, I'm guessing those finance costs have made it difficult for you to um, invest in hotels, which I know other, other tour operators have done a lot more of than you. So. I guess that's something you're going to be, you know, you've got a hotel fund at the moment, you've, you've really done a lot of work with the hotel brands, I think you've, made, you've brought some interesting ones on the market. I guess that's a, a priority going forward if you can sort out the balance sheet and, and get some more money in there. Yeah, even if with this constraint, we were really full steam going ahead with our development uh, in, in Cook's Clubs, in, in Sun Wings, in Casa Cook. In, in Sun Connect, in all our brands and what we have set up, we, we opened this summer over 20 hotels Cooks Clubs, Casa Cooks, uh, as, as well uh, Sun Primes. So we, we have a massive task in front of us, and so far, so good. We opened on time, and, uh, and we have fantastic, fantastic hotels where we can show and say that is what we do, even with limited, with limited resources. And, and the way out, uh, out of the limited resources, when we set up our hotel fund, 
where we put seed assets in. We have now raised 93 million of, of new capital where we can invest in hotels in the fund and all the hotels which are in the fund are then managed by us. So going back to the airline question, are we, are we going to see a resolution soon or is this something that's going to take, uh, still going to take some time, do you think? Look, we, we, from the beginning we said that takes time and we are not in a rush and uh, we, we are in the process. We have a healthy uh, level of interest. More I'm not allowed to say. Okay. And the final tough question, there were some reports in the press a couple of weeks ago about the actual company being for sale. How much can you say about that and is there any veracity in those stories? Look, as, as, a, as a CEO of a public company, I know exactly what I can and what I cannot say. And I cannot, I cannot comment on any rumours. I hope everybody in the room uh, understands that. Okay, that, they're, the, they're the hard questions out of the way, okay? So let's, uh -huh. let's talk about something a bit more positive. You, the whole day report came out yesterday and there yes. were some really interesting things in there about... Uh, that is the one here. Uh, it's actually Anybody really good. Anybody wants I mean, it, then uh, it, just go on out. Sometimes these company brochures, uh, you know, they're, they're not great. But th this one's actually really good and really interesting. There's some yes. really, really Thank interesting things. And, and they, they resonate with some of the themes of the conference about responsible travel and tourism. And one of the, one of the things I was interested in, the stat about um, how people recycle when they go uh, abroad. So when we're at home, we recycle a lot. We do a lot of... Um, we cycle plastics, glass, whatever, but when they go abroad and when, when we go on holiday, we, that goes out the window, whether that's because we don't know what the local laws are over there, but that's something you found out. And I guess it's a challenge for you as a, as a hospitality brand, how you get people to recycle more, how you get your hotels to, to do more of that kind of thing. Yeah, look, the, the easier bit is what can we do in our hotels? And there we made a plastic pledge that we want to save 70 million of single-use plastics in our value chain where we can influence whether this is on the plane or in the hotels or as well in our, uh, in our offices. That is kind of the easier bit and we are on a, in, in a, on a good way to get to that target this year. The, the less easier bit is how can we contribute to the education of our customers? And uh, that's why I have it here on my knees, to, to really have the, the exact figures. It, it's really the case that 78% of our customers, uh, of, of holiday makers are recycling at home, and only half of it are recycling uh, on holidays. Mm -hmm. So that means that we as an industry, we have a big part to play, to educate and to somehow make people as well aware that when they are on holidays. And, and I give you an example, Playa de Palma. If you go for a run in the morning, early in the morning, you don't want to see what is on the beach. Before the big trucks are coming and cleaning everything, you, you don't want to see that because it's just full of, of rubbish and full of, of plastic and, and everything is, is on the beach. And there, that is not only the hotels which can influence that, that is the customer himself, that are the shops who, who, are, who are selling uh, all, everything in, in plastics. There we have a huge educational uh, task in front of us. The whole industry, that's not something which is specific to Thomas Cook. Mm. And there were some other interesting stats about that, not just about responsible travel, but about, um, about the different attitudes in, in travellers. And I guess Thomas Cook has been around for a long time, so you've seen the change. And you closed your 1830 brand uh, last year, and um, one of the stats you found, um, I guess this backs this up, is that uh, younger people now are less likely to go out partying, they don't want to drink, they want to have closer experiences with the community there. Um, that's different to maybe 20 years ago. So how does a company like Thomas Cook, which is built on mass market tourism, adapt to those kind of changing consumer sentiments? Uh, that, that was really striking for me as well. This shift from uh, laying in the sun and just get a sunburn, partying and drinking and, and having a simply fun, that, that is really, that's cooling off, that's, that's almost out. So, <laughs> Funny enough, my, my CFO, when he read the report, said, what are people then doing today? <laughs> but he is over 60, I'm not yet 60, so he could even <laughs> say that more in his question mark in his eyes. So our response to that, and there we are spot on, really spot on with our uh, hotel brand, Cook's Club. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with, with all that what is somehow out. That is creating an atmosphere in, in a hotel where the younger generation exactly wants to, 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 to experience local food, vegan food as well, uh, cool music, uh, just relax, relaxed atmosphere around the pool where the communal areas in a stylish environment. And I always say that are Instagrammable hotels because they can take the picture and then say, look how cool I'm holidaying. And that is exactly what we tested in, uh, in, in Crete last year. 
uh, with an amazing success, and that's why we rolled out uh, now this year eight, eight Cooks Club in this summer. And, and what is helping us, if you are constrained with capital, then you don't need to buy the hotels. When the hoteliers are seeing, oh, that is really cool, this, this concept, they are lining up and they want to have the concept and they want their, our help to get them there that they can, for, for a hotel in the second or third line, which has an average uh, revenue per, per guest of 35, we have it now with 60 in those hotels because we just really, we, we rejuvenate a, a, a normal hotel, a 0815 hotel, we say, in something which is really attractive for our customers. And that is, that is, a, that is our conviction that we are going to have success with. And do you think Thomas Cook can reach that new generation of consumers? Can Thomas Cook be cool in their eyes as a, as a legacy company? Are you, <laughs> can it be cool? Yeah, we are cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now look, that, that is also in this holiday report. That is, and that is not only in this holiday report, that was also a, a, a Morgan, Morgan Stanley research. Mm -hmm. Half, almost half, I think 48%, almost, almost half of the generation set is saying or is indicating that it is a preferred uh, way to travel with a tour operator. And if you go in the boot of Accenture, everything out of one hand, that is what, exactly what we are doing. Maybe they are also, not maybe, they are also somehow attracted by the certainty what we can deliver. And now coming to, to, uh, to Cook's Club, uh, we are also in Casa Cook. 75% of the customers we have in those hotels are new to us. Mm -hmm. So we are obviously able to really attract these customers, and we are also going new ways. We are, we are much more on social media with, with those hotels, we are inviting influencers who are blogging. We have just today launched an internal influencer program where we want to have 20 people who are just having a huge community following them and who are fond of our, what, we are, what we are offering, because we have to be proud of what we are offering. and, and, and this program is going to be launched, that they are really going on the openings of those hotels, that they know it, that they train our people uh, for it, and that they are spreading the message. It is a great message, what we have to tell. And another big opportunity, I guess, for you, not just in terms of getting a new generation of travelers out there, it's, it's going to new markets. So China, your joint venture with Fosun, which I think owns about 18% of you now, that's going pretty well, I guess. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, look, China is the, the biggest travel market, leisure market, and, uh, and is the fastest growing leisure market. And uh, we are now in the third year. We, we, it's really, it, it's fascinating in China. You, you, it is a startup. We were really building it from scratch together with our uh, main investor. And we had 20,000 guests in the first year in where you really have to set up everything, the distribution channels, the product. Uh, but we were not thinking of, of putting an airline into China. We were not thinking of opening shops. It is just really a web-based tour operator. Mm -hmm. In the second year, and that shows you the dynamics, we had 160,000 guests. And now we are in the third year, and this is, this is just growing, it's booming. But as well there, we, the, the difference we are making there is we are developing our own brand hotels there as well for the Chinese travelers in China. And the second, we are totally focused on our customers. So we are, we are all the service features what we developed here in, uh, in Europe, we are trend, uh, going with that as well into China. We have the 24-hour hotel satisfaction promise there that, that our, our colleagues who are running uh, the joint venture, they are totally customer focused. And that makes a difference as well in China. And is it a long-term project? I guess you can't necessarily expect it to be really profitable straight away, but is it a long-term vision for you? Yeah, it definitely is a long-term vision, but it is a very powerful vision because the market is big. If you, if you can make a difference, then you, may, you have a success. If you have the right partner, and we always said in our strategy, what we cannot do on our own the best way, we are partnering. We have an excellent partner in China who is supporting us. And uh, our ambition is that with China, we want to have the size of one of our big markets mm -hmm. over the medium term.
And you've kind of also, you know, in terms of that, you've done partnerships with other companies as well to kind of broaden the business. You've got a partnership with Expedia as a city, city um, for your city breaks and hotel only. Is that something we'll see more of now? And how is that going? And can we expect to see Thomas Cook holidays or hotels on Expedia anytime soon if they're not already there? Yeah, they, that is part of the deal that we are putting our hotels in a very, in a very controlled way because we want to have as well with some of those hotels we want to have exclusivity that you just get it with Thomas Cook. But uh, that is part of, of, of the partnership that we are selling as well, our inventory on their platform and that is a powerful platform without a doubt. Uh, the experience we have is Expedia on the city and that is not our core business, that was explicitly not our core business. But on, on the city and domestic uh, space, we have, we, have, we have really good success with, with uh, this platform. And you've talked a bit about it um, early, uh, already, about over-tourism and impacts in certain areas. That's another area, aspect of responsible travel. Um, the power of companies, travel companies to really change destinations. Uh, you know, Thomas Cook in the past maybe has, has brought lots of tourists to certain places, and nowadays you're thinking of doing different things and reevaluating it. Can you talk a bit about that and how you see your role as a responsible tour operator? Oh, there are many, many facets in, in that. Responsible tour operating means as well taking social responsibility for the destinations. And that means as well that, for example, if we had a travel ban out of the UK, uh, we still were flying into Tunisia, out of France and out of Belgium and even out of Germany because those governments didn't have a travel ban. And we were supporting and trying to maintain as well the quality of the hotels and uh, made training programs with, uh, with the Tunisian government together. And when it came back, uh, and when we could fly again, it was somehow not immediately back to good old times, but we have a rapid uh, increase in, in the demand to Tunisia because we helped the Tunisian uh, hoteliers to just maintain the quality and, and, and to, yeah, to, be, to play a big part in, the, in their economy. That's that, one thing. And then the other thing, that, that you not just let drop a, uh, a destination like hot potatoes. And, and the other thing is that we, we can develop with our power and with our distribution power, we can develop new areas where you don't have this, uh, this, this, this discussion about over-tourism. And, uh, and, and the third one is to really rejuvenate, re maybe better put it, destinations which are somehow a bit, a bit with a bad image, you can do it like Melia is doing it, and not just to talk about Thomas Cook. Melia put a Mi Hotel in the middle of uh, 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 Magaluf. It is changing the face of Magaluf. And we are doing exactly the same thing now with a hotel in, uh, in Playa de Palma, the German zone of, uh, of, of, uh, of, 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 of Palma, of Mallorca. And, and we are attracting a new set of, of customers which are not just going into the beer garden and, uh, and, and, and just uh, drinking and, and wanting drinking, partying. We, we are changing and rejuvenating destinations uh, together with our distribution power and with our innovative concepts. OK, let's go to some questions. First one. I like this one. Peter, why are you wearing two watches? <laughs> <laughs> one is a watch and one is a Fitbit. So, uh, and, and I... I I'm quite disciplined that I get my 10,000 steps a day. <laughs> so good. that is the Fitbit, that is the watch. Um, and another one, I, I was going to get on to this, this aspect of um, Thomas Cook. So is the future of Thomas Cook, is it online? Um, or is it in the high street? Or is it some kind of combination of both? You've closed some shops recently in the UK. I know it's very different in Scandinavia, where you maybe have no shops, and in Germany, where you have a lot more. I guess it depends on the markets in terms of... Yeah, in, in, in Nordics, we have just closed last week the last shop. What, what was open. So in, in, in Nordics, you can only reach us via online or a, a little bit via phone, I have to say. Uh, in, in UK, we have still the strongest footprint of all our markets offline. And uh, when I started in UK in 2012 as, as the MD of, of the UK business, we had 1,222 shops. Wow. And now we have 585. So we halved it, but you can't just say shops are not necessary anymore because we have, we have the phenomenon that most of our customers, they start their journey on the web. Mm -hmm. And then 
a lot of them are going into the shop and getting the reassurance with our people we have in the shop. And then we let it open whether they book finally in the shop or, or online. But we see, we see now really since years, we, we see a continuous shift and that is a transformation. In Germany, we, I closed the shops or I, I, I cut them down when I was uh, the responsible of Germany. I cut them down from 300 to 120. And there we have then another 350 of franchise shops okay. which are uh, under, under our... So more in the UK then at the moment? It's, it's, it's the, most, the biggest footprint we have in the UK okay. still. Um, next question. So where do you see the future of Thomas Cook versus other tour operators? How will you stand out um, while hotels, low-cost carriers and OTAs are offering package holidays? Yeah, the, the, it's, really, it's really about differentiation and about uh, giving our customers the best experience in the hotels and with our services and being absolutely customer focused. If, if I give you the example of 24-hour hotel satisfaction promise, a customer who is coming to us in our differentiated portfolio uh, has in the first 24 hours can say, this is something what you promised to me and this is not what I have here and what I expected. Then we have 24 hours time to put it in order. Otherwise, we give him 25% of the package price back without the discussion or he can fly back home. He doesn't want to fly back home, he wants to enjoy the holidays. And that our piece is where we say this is real, a real differentiator next to what we have as an offer in, in our hotel portfolio. You introduced Pick Your Own Room as well and also um, Reserve a Sun Lounger as kind of yes. differentiation. Are they, do they still exist and are they, would you like to build on that? That they, they are existing and they are not only existing, they are really successful. Right. So 50% of our whole inventory, what we have in, as, as available for a reservation on sunbeds, are, are picked up by our customers. So you don't have to put your towel at 7 o'clock in the morning on the sound lounge. You have a reserved a sunbed and this is for the whole stay for £20. So that is, that is a deal compared to other regions when you pay uh, for, per day for, per bed uh, £20. And, and choose your room was an innovation what we launched that a family can choose. I want, I want not a balcony, I want to have a, a garden room where I've, uh, I'm close to the, to the pool, to the kids' pool, or I want as a couple, I want to be more in the area where, uh, where the, the life is. So it is really something where, where we explored the customer needs and where we were bang on what, what the customer expects from a, from a tour operator. A very good question here from somebody uh, which resonates with today's theme. How important are print brochures to Thomas Cook and would you ever remove them on environmental grounds? Oh, we reduce the, cop the number of copies uh, massively. And uh, we, we use it, of course, in our shops, but we are not just giving out brochures and say, go home and, and, and choose, because we know if, if, we, if we can recommend the customer to go on the web, we are much, much better on the web in content because you don't have just one A4 page where you can put the content for a hotel and in, in, in the most extremes uh, that you have two A4 pages. That is good old time when I started in the, in the, in the industry. What do I put on, on one page? L a little, maybe two pictures and, and then you in the web you are almost unlimited what content you are putting in. And, and we are trying to use more and more web. Out of ecological reason, yes, that is, that is a side effect, but as well because it's a customer need and, and we can help the customer best to inform himself in the way. Okay, I think I'm getting the flashing light, so that's all we've got time for. Peter, I hope you can come back next year with, uh, after a, a happy year, maybe, and uh, the third time in a row. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Thank you.